Okay. Right. So um, the U.S. Chamber of Commerce is uh, helping uh, with the uh, problem of uh, a child care shortage in our area. From the Chamber's view, what seems to be the problem? Is it just that our population is growing so fast that the child care providers that were here are just overwhelmed? So I'll take that first question, um, uh, and I'll let Julia answer um, some of the issues that are on a national scale. So this has come to our attention for a long time, and every community in our region is, is struggling with finding child care. And the real issue is, is all about money and availability. Um, it's very, very difficult to find child care. It's hard to operate a child care facility because um, the overhead costs are, are very high as far as hiring a, a decent um, labor to, to help you. Um, and with the regulatory environment really enforcing uh, quality child care, rents have gone up. And just the overhead cost of operations in general makes child care something that's more of a labor of love than it is of anybody um, being able to have a really um, profitable business in any way. Um, but it's the issue has translated into a workforce issue in that the shortage is affecting how many people who want to go back to work can actually do so. And this is why it came to the, the chamber, Bend Chamber of Commerce's attention is because so many of the employers in our membership were expressing um, a lot of problems with retaining uh, their talent and their workforce simply because when they're having families their employees are not being able to find a, a slot. And for example, if you have an infant, it can be at least a year to 18 months being on a wait list. And if you don't know that, and if you don't prepare for it as parents, somebody ends up having to stay home or you have to make ends meet in some other way. What are some of the solutions that are being suggested or are there really any suggestions uh, given the realities of high labor costs, high rents, and a regulatory environment that is supposed to keep these children safe? Well, there are a couple of approaches that we're, we're taking um, on a regional basis. And one of them is to provide assistance to providers who are trying to expand and or, or new startups by uh, giving them resources and, and advice on how to get through the regulatory process, how to interpret code and land use, and, and helping them to navigate some of these changes um, as best we can. Some of the regional partners that we work with are trying to consolidate operational overhead costs so they can reduce some of those costs to providers over time. And there are many other programs on a regional basis. The other thing that we're doing is we're going to hire a, a position called an accelerator, a child care accelerator. This person is going to be working with providers, but also be working with the higher ed institutions in the region, OSU Cascades and Central Oregon Community College, on a concept of developing a program that can be implemented throughout the region. And this would be based on high quality ch care, child care, and uh, reinforced with uh, their educational programs and their research programs on early brain development and human development. Um, and we're also trying to reach out to employers who are experiencing retention problems and ask them if they would be willing to uh, help out with either startup costs or operational costs in exchange for some slots available for their employees. Um, we're also rounding up donors. We're looking at all sorts of grants. We're looking at uh, land that makes sense, both public and private. Any way we can reduce the overhead to make these centers pencil out without compromising quality. So this new position that we're going to be hiring here in the next couple of months we'll really be concentrating on that as a pilot project. Who should attend the uh, meetings either in Lapine or Bend tomorrow then? Are you looking for providers and parents or 
well, who are you hoping to attract? We're hoping to attract a lot of the employers in each of these communities who are expressing um, frustration at, at retention. Um, also some providers and folks who are experts in, in the field. Um, it's really a, a coalition of folks who have a piece of the problem that they can bring to the table uh, and who might be willing to collaborate and brainstorm with us on, on what the solutions are and help us implement some of these pilot programs as well as bring us aware of what each community is doing on their own. Those are my questions. Uh, anything you need to add? Um, if you don't mind, I'd like to ask Julia Barfield from the U.S. Chamber Foundation to kind of share why, what they're doing and why they're here. Would you mind if she did oh, that? Oh, no, that's fine. That's fine. Great. So here's Julia. I would, um, I mean, I think I would echo everything that Katie just said. I think what we are seeing and what so many people, families, and employers are experiencing in Oregon is reflective of the country as a whole. And so from the U.S. Chamber Foundation's perspective, we really see this as an economic problem, um, which makes it everybody's problem. It's a two-generation workforce challenge. So we see how child care is a barrier for so many families to either enter, re-enter, or stay in the workforce. And then we also, um, based on what we know about brain development, know that those first five years of life are the opportunity to lay a strong foundation on which future learning is built. And so we really see this as an opportunity to make a concerted effort um, to bring the business community to these conversations and say, you know, this is an all hands on deck situation. And so I'm encouraged by what Katie and so many other chambers in the central Oregon region are, um, how they're approaching this problem because Everyone has a role to play, and there are experts in the field who have been doing this great work for so many years. And there's also um, opportunities for new people to get involved and to bring in ideas and um, share their perspective and their, their own expertise. So I'm really encouraged by what's happening here in Oregon and why we're choosing to highlight this work and really um, continue to support their efforts because this is reflective of the, the bigger problem across the country. and. We've seen a dedicated group of people trying to find solutions. 